What are two performance killers in React? Well, one is re-rendering too often, and the other is a slow component. So let me show you one tool that addresses both of those problems for my good friend Aiden Bai. Let's get right into it. All right, so to see what we can do with this new tool, we need an application to test it on. So to make that, I'm going to use Create TS Router App. That's going to create us a tan stack router app. And I'm also going to add an additional flag, add-ons. Add-ons are extra features that you can add to the application. Let's go ahead and start this up. I'm going to call this React Scan Demo. It doesn't really matter which one I use here. I'm going to use File Router. And what I'm looking for is the TanStack store because it has a really nice example that's going to make it really easy to show over renders. Let's hit enter there. Now I'll bring up React Scan Demo. Okay, now that's up, let's fire up the application. I'll bring it up in the browser and look how easy this is. So we've got a store page over here. We get this nice little store example. This is showing off TanStack store, which is a very simple state manager. So let's go take a quick look at how this is implemented. So over in our source directory, we have a lib. That's where the store is. So the first thing we're gonna do is bring in derived and store, and then we're gonna use store to create a new store, and that store is gonna store an object that has the first name and the last name, and full name is going to be a derived value from first name and last name, so that whenever that dependency, or those depths, in this case the store, change, we'll automatically rebuild full names. It's kind of like a memo, in a sense. All right, let's get a look at how this is actually used. So over here in demo.store.tsx, so we're going to bring in that store and that full name from the demo store, and then we're going to bring in the use store hook. Now, TanStack store is actually connected to multiple different platforms, so we're going to use the React version of that because we're on React. But it also supports Solid and Vue and a bunch of other frameworks. And we can see our parent component, demo store. It just invokes first name, last name, and full name, which are components. First name and last name are essentially just the same component. They just look at two different fields. We use the use store to get the current value of the field, and then we have an on chain that sets the store state using set state. And then full name just uses that same use store hook on the derived, which can be used just like a store. So really nice and symmetric there. All right, so in order to understand when things go wrong, let's take a look at when things are going right with React Scan. So I'm going to stop the app. I'm going to bring in React Scan. And now I'm going to go over to my main. And now before I bring in React, what I want to do is bring in React Scan. Now, that ordering is important, so you want to bring in React Scan first. So I'm going to bring in Scan from React Scan, and then really anywhere down in here, we're going to enable it. So I'm going to say Scan, and then say Enable is true. All right, let's launch our server again. All right, when I hit Refresh up here, we can see that React Scan is up in the corner over there. How easy is that? And if I hit Refresh again, we can see those components are actually rendering. We get that little flash. So now every time I make a change here, we would expect, actually, it, what we were getting, which is if I make a change to, to say, Smith here was the last name, all I would expect to re-render would be the last name as the values changed, and then the full name, which is the join of those two values. So right now, it's working right. Now before we break this and see how good React Scan is in figuring out our problems in our application, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Infinite Red. So React Scan doesn't handle React Native, which is sad. But my friends over at Infinite Red do handle React Native. They are the OG React experts. And if you've got performance problems in your React Native app or structural problems or architectural problems, the folks that you want to talk to are the same folks that I talk to when it comes to React Native, and that's Infinite Red. Infinite Red has been in the React Native game from the start, not just on the technology side of the house and the application building side of the house, but also in enriching the community. They've got excellent open source efforts. They've got a fantastic Ignite framework that you can use to help scaffold your React Native application. They run a fantastic conference called Chain React right here in my hometown of Portland, Oregon. I was so happy to go and speak there last year. I hope I get the chance again. We'll see. But where they really shine is bringing their customers' applications to life. You can see it in these case studies. They're really excited and engaged and really work with customers to build the best apps possible. And I can't be prouder to have Infinite Red as a partner with this channel. So thank you so much, Infinite Red, for sponsoring the channel. If you're looking for help with the React Native app, look no further than my friends over at Infinite Red. I'm serious. These are the folks that I go to when I have questions about React Native, and you should too. Okay, let's mess up our example. So how do we mess up an example like this? Well, pretty easy, actually. 
So you see this use store invocation here? That's when we actually pull the data from the store. And you give it two things. You give it the store and you give it a selector function. And that selector function gets given the current state of the store and it gets to pick off any values from it that you want. But what happens if you leave the selector off? Well, you're gonna get back the full store. So what you really want there is you want to actually destructure that to get out first name. And we'll do the same thing down here. And now when I hit refresh, we can see that anytime I change either of those fields, all of the fields light up and that's wrong. And that's one of the things that React Scan is showing us, but let's drill down deeper into it. So if I go and click on first name here, we get a lot of interesting information about the first name component. So if I click here, it actually tells us over here what changed. Why did that component re-render? Which is really cool. And the reason is that the last name changed. How informative is this? This is much, much deeper than what you get with React DevTools. So if you're having issues with components rendering too much, clearly React Scan is going to help you with that. But will it help you with the performance angle? Will it help you identify a slow component? Well, let's create a new problem by making our applications slower. To do that, I'm going to change the implementation of full name. So full name is just going to take the full name and actually use a character component to render each one of those characters individually. So let's bring in that character component. So character just takes a character and displays it. Now to use that, let's go down here and we'll take our full name and split it up character by character and then use that character component to render it. Well, let's take a look. Wow, right away, yeah, a lot of stuff rendering, but it's actually still going pretty fast. So if I keep on typing here, look at the FPS over there, it's maintaining a steady state of 60 FPS. So it's even though, yeah, we're, we're creating a lot of DOM elements and that sort of thing, it's, it's still really fast. And yes, React natively is fast. So we really need to add something extra to slow it down. So over my character, I'm gonna add some stalling code. I'm just gonna go and create a 40,000 item array, fill it up with all the numbers and then sum up all those numbers. Really anything would do, but this is pretty easy. And let's see how we go. So, oh, right away we can see the FPS start to drop. And the FPS is actually gonna get worse as we go because the longer this string gets, the longer those weights go. And ah, there we go, that's it. So this is the other thing I wanna show you, which is this really cool notification system here. You actually enable audio alerts, that's great too. But what it shows you is that, ooh, we got an FPS drop here. So why is that? Well, when you click on it, we're getting all the information that we need. The issue is the character component. It's getting way too many renders and the renders are really slow. You can also get overview information, trying to give you some kind of synopsis of why you're having issues. And then intriguingly, you also get some AI prompts. The idea here is you can actually copy and paste this prompt into something like Claude or ChatGPT, and maybe it'll help you at that point work through the problem. So you're essentially giving Claude or ChatGPT all the information it needs, hopefully, to help you figure out what the problem is. All right, I hope you enjoyed that quick look at React Scan. Give it a try in your own application. It's free and it gives you all kinds of insights about where you might be having problems in the performance of your application. Aiden Bai is killing it. I'm loving seeing utilities like this from the million folks. You know who else is killing it though? My friends over at Infinite Red. Thanks again, guys, for helping support the show. If you wanna support this show, leave a comment, ask some questions about this, hit that like button if you really like the video, or hit the subscribe button if you really, really like the video, and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.